So my name is Ramesh Radhakrishnan. I am um, part of AI and Advanced Services team. You can think of me as customer zero for everything that you just heard about this morning, right? So I think Jake did a great job of explaining um, the basic value prop for VMware Private AI. Uh, Justin and Chris kind of went over some of the technical details. So we're seeing a lot of customer traction um, where customers are interested in the private AI solution uh, from VMware. They want to test it out. They want to use it. So can you imagine, you know, let's say a customer's already bought into this. They've deployed it in their environment. They have GPUs. What do you think is going to be their next challenge? Anyone want to guess? Changing thing. <laughs> that's one, yes. Hopefully there's not enough change that they have to do because they're still using VMware technology. So as an IT administrator, you know, it's probably going to be a very similar experience with some minor changes. The biggest challenge is now they have to demonstrate value, business value, right? And this is this is a challenge for the for the stakeholders that are actually sponsoring this. So, what I'd like to cover in this um, session is kind of you know as it's titled, kind of the art of the possible with private AI, which means. What are the different types of use cases that we are seeing customers trying to adopt? What are we doing internally ourselves on top of private AI um, leveraging Gen AI technologies? So there's a lot going on in this uh, slide. So everything that you heard about this morning is at the bottom of this, uh, this slide here or this figure. Right, so this is your VMware private AI foundation. You have your GPUs, they're being managed. From an infrastructure team perspective, you know, we saw all the cool capabilities that is built into the product. Now the challenge that is presented to the, you know, the app developers, the data scientists, everybody else that's actually leveraging this is how do you build these applications how do you leverage all these amazing capabilities that now are exposed to you because you have GPUs, right? So in my team, you know, it's actually comprised of infrastructure folks, uh, system administrators, software developers, and data scientists. And our one of our customers is the rest of VMware. So it's all internal stakeholders today. These are other teams that have data scientists, that have machine learning engineers, and now with Gen AI, it's also software developers who want to, to use AI uh, capabilities. So this is kind of just a snapshot at the top of the different type of services and capabilities that we offer on top of this platform. And talking to various customers, most of them are doing either parts of this or all of this plus additional things that they want to do as well. So the way to look at this is, you know, if you go from left to right, it kind of exposes the GPUs and gives GPUs to end, end users. So in this case, we have a Jupyter Notebook environment, which provides Jupyter uh, Notebooks as a service, and then provides access to GPUs to those users if they want it, right? And we can slice and dice the GPUs. They can go and pick what, what um, memory size they want. And all of this... Jupyter Notebook environment as a service, is that something you're offering customers directly? Or is that just your own development uh, environment that you've created for your service? Only? So there's two, two answers for that. So we started building this before we had private AI, right? So we do have a platform as a service with, with Jupyter Notebook that we offer to customers. But with, is it built on top of private AI, or is that? So now with private AI, we have the DLVM, which has the container images which could include Jupyter Notebook. So we do spin up that DLVM and provide the DLVM to customers or to, the, uh, to our application developers, and they would get access to Jupyter Notebooks. So it is one of your it is one. Quote, uh, containers that are available on yes. Harbor or, or wherever you? It is. So most of the, like for example, when you spin up a PyTorch container, it will have a Jupyter Notebook as part okay. of the container image. Now moving to the right, we have a Visual Studio uh, uh, 
IDE environment that's made available to software developers. Again, similar to the Jupyter Notebook, they can get access to GPUs. It also comes with uh, code assistant capabilities so that it can do code completion or chat with a large language model if needed. We have uh, powered it using open source large language model um, for code development in the past. And we've also worked with um, a commercial uh, software provider that actually provides a better experience using a supported product. Now, as you go further to the second half, this goes a little further away from just pure infrastructure capabilities, and it kind of gets into services. So we offer something called an LLM service. Think of this as being similar to like OpenAI, right? But for a lot of regulated industries, you don't want your employees going and accessing ChatGPT or OpenAI and sending your confidential information to third-party LLM providers. So in this case, we are running a host of large language models on private AI and controlling what goes in and out of those uh, LLMs. There's different modalities for this. You can access it using a user interface. You can access it using an API. And there is also an API playground for the software developers to use. And then the very last piece here, again, this is just a subset. We have things, uh, we have a few services um, which we call expert Q&A. Think of this as a chatbot. It's obviously gone through multiple generation and revisions. And this is kind of going to be the focus of uh, the remaining part of my talk. And then we also uh, open sourced a content summarization service uh, at Explore. So this is also a very common use case that we see a lot of different enterprises and organizations uh, trying to leverage on top of their own large language models that they have. The expert q and is that something you've fine-tuned? Is there a knowledge base associated with it, that sort of thing? Yeah, so yes, and I will actually cover that in the rest of the slides and go through the different phases that we went through uh, and what's going to be the end goal because uh, we are still kind of working on how to, uh, to actually improve that. And we think that's going to be a great example of what a lot of different organizations will try to implement themselves. Um, so we'll call out the different things that they need to keep in mind when doing that. And you're presenting this primarily, this is an example of what people could do with private AI rather than this is some add-ons that you're going to get from us as private AI. Yeah, so over time we might incorporate. So one of the cool things is that part of my organization and also, uh, you know, we are, we are part of the same R&D team that builds private AI. And like I said, we are customer zero, so there's a very strong feedback loop um, that that okay, I did, did want to differentiate this. Is, is this what you're shipping us today versus is this an example of what I as a customer could build because that is really Ex significant. Correct. Yeah, that's a great point. So what you saw so far, all the screenshots, everything is what is part of the product. Some of the, screen, some of the demos that you will see are things that we built on top of that product. And again, there's, you, know, you get to 80% of what you need in terms of I need to host a large language model. But now, things that you need to build on top of that, you need to have the software developers and application developers to do that yourself. Cool. Any So one thing I'll call out here is that GPUs, again, I think this point has been brought up multiple times. Um, we have multiple classes of GPUs. The cool thing is all of this is in one large cluster, uh, and it's all managed by VCF. We don't have to carve off different GPUs for different projects, for different users, different organizations. What we do is maximize the use of these GPUs by running, obviously, all these uh, different services and capabilities on different namespaces that reside on top of this large Kubernetes clusters. And then there are one-off use cases where a team might need to do a special POC. Because we're running on top of VCF, we can really quickly just take off those GPU nodes from outside the Kubernetes cluster, offer them as virtual machines to these teams. They do their thing. We add them back to the GPU pool. So all of this makes it really easy for us to keep the utilization of these GPUs close to 100%. Cool. So I mentioned you know, business value. 
right? And how that is what um, a lot of these organizations and stakeholders have to, uh, to achieve. So what we've been able to do um, by those services that, that I talked about is kind of achieve a lot of this um, you know, over the last couple of years. And having private AI helped us accelerate some of those um, for us over the last you know, six months or nine months. So the first one is improved documentation search. And this is, this is actually a capability that we've been working on for the past you know, three years or more. So this actually predates uh, Gen AI. One of the goals for our organization was to provide, or actually to be uh, the federated search for our internal uh, VMware employees, right? So we had different teams. You know, for, you could think of you know like the documentation team that was hosting technical documentation. We had like confluence teams that was hosting confluence. They all were doing keyword search, and then keyword search is not obviously the the best when it comes to uh, some of the results that you can achieve with that. So we leveraged uh, language models and embedding models to actually improve documentation search. And then over time, we've been able to get better and better results. So compared to keyword search, we're getting about six times better performance. And then the cool thing is that we're able to leverage this search capability to be part of our RAG uh, application. What When you say it's 5.7 times better, mm -hmm. what does better mean? Yeah. So in this case, we are saying, you know, I say top five results. So when you do that search, if the answer is not in the top five results that are uh, provided back to the user, so you know you could show ten hits or twenty hits or hundred hits. If the results are in the top five, then uh, that that is the metric that we use. And how did you measure that? Meaning, because they clicked on it, because you surveyed them, because you had them rate yeah. the results. Which way? Yeah. So we basically used our Google search history mm -hmm. as uh, to build a data set. So any Google search that resulted in them landing on any of our documentation or our pages was used to create a data set. Yeah, and that's what I'm like and then, landing on. What does yes. that mean? I'm sorry to get, I'm trying to understand the data that you're talking about. Correct. So when I say landing on, it's, you know, there's 50 different portals that we actually index, mm -hmm. which includes our knowledge base. So again, this is yeah. Public, yeah. Um, publicly available data, so it's our knowledge base, it's our technical documentation, it's our marketing documentation. So all the VMware search solutions that are available publicly to customers in the world uh, use this new facility that you're talking about? Uh, they don't. So this is, this is what we've built internally for our own employees. Um, what's available to uh, the external um, users is what's implemented by our IT teams. So what, you know, I'm, I'm struggling a bit there. So you, you mentioned Google. So yes. What, so but this, is, this is internal. This is internal. So we needed to build a test data set. So it's very important to actually measure uh, and compare if you're, if you're trying something different. Yeah. So in this case, in order to understand what was, you know, what are folks like yourself searching for that lands you on our content, right? So that was used as this set of so you, tests. Okay. So those questions, like you might go to Google and type, yep. you know, how do I uninstall vSAN? Okay. And that lands you on our... Sure. Yeah. Yep. So that's a question that we use. So if you do keyword search, if, if that right page is not presented to you in the top five results of your Google search, right? Or in the keyword search that's implemented in our own technical documentation site. And we compare that against uh, the semantic search here. Which so, is internal? It is internal. Okay. So they're not the same thing. But we, were you using Google previously to do the internal search? Yeah. So, so let me rephrase this. So what we did is we provided an internal service called the VMware Expert um, or VMware Automated Question Answering System, which, are, which is available to internal employees. And 
when they use that interface, and I'll, I'll actually show a demo of that, they are getting five times better search results than if they use uh, like a keyword search based, something like Google today. And obviously, but if you Google, use the internal thing, you get, you will get an answer better than if you use an external thing, if you use Google externally. Yeah, because okay. this is fine tuned for specifically yep. for VMware. And is that recent Google or is that Google no, when it was good? Yeah, this was, this particular result was two years ago. Obviously oh. today Google's, Google's leveraging some AI capabilities as well. So if we redo those results, it would be probably be closer. Some of the other use cases is you know, leveraging our summarizer capability, for example, to, uh, to you know, in, in, in cases where we are looking at customer feedback that is provided like online, for example, you can think of how this is going to be a large amount of text sometimes, and then there's obviously a large volume of uh, this that is provided back as well. So we are able to summarize that and gather the, the critical information and provide that back to product teams. Really quickly show a quick demo of the, the expert tool that I was talking about. There's multiple use cases for this. Again, this is an internal tool today, but eventually we want to, I, I think you brought up uh, making this available as part of private AI. This might be something that we would um, you know, work with our product management team to see if there is demand for this and how this can be made available uh, to our customers. So when we started this journey, it was, like I said, it was basically replacing search uh, using an embedding model. So this is the interface. It looks like a typical search interface. It might look similar to Google. Um, so let me type you know, what is a hypervisor? So the way the original search worked is that, you know, it would give you back the relevant passages from the, from the knowledge base and it would highlight the answer for you, right? So it's software that run, creates and runs virtual machine. So this is a, kind of a typical search query and search result. It's using a language model to kind of highlight what the answer is in the passages that are returned as hits. So you can see that's fairly straightforward. So that was basically phase zero of this expert. Uh, and this was you know, things that we worked on three years ago and was state of the art back then. Obviously now we kind of moved on to a large language model. We're leveraging RAG. So if we use RAG, what does that solution look like? So now you can actually have a conversation with a large language model. We are using that search capability that I just demonstrated to provide the relevant documentation or knowledge to the large language model so that it can produce the right content for you. So now when I type in the same question, Type that right. Now it's actually going through all the relevant documentation that's being fed to the large language model. It creates the answer for you. And it gives you a lot more uh, information as well. So one of the cool things here is that, you know, like I said, this is an internal, this is an internal tool, so we can look at both internal and external um, <coughs> content. So in this case, I should actually switch to external only because I'm glad I just typed in a very simple question like what is a hypervisor. Uh, if I did something else, it might have pulled results from a Confluence page that would have, uh, might have shown you things you shouldn't be uh, privy to. So, so this is where we are today. Um, we are looking at advanced rack techniques. Um, so one of the ones that's looking very promising is what's shown here in phase three called corrective rag. Uh, the way that this works is it looks at the results that are presented from search. So as you can imagine with rag, your answer is only gonna be as good as the documents that are provided from your search. And what we've seen is that the best that we're able to get using search is at around 70%. 
right? So one third of the time, you're not, the LLM is not provided with the right answer and it could hallucinate. And we found that it's actually able to hallucinate pretty well. We tested this with our support engineers. There were some queries where the LLM was hallucinating because the search didn't have the right uh, documents provided back to the model. And they had to actually go look up the documentation to make sure that there wasn't something new in the VMware product that they didn't know about. It was that good at uh, generating that answer. Yes, exactly. So in the interest of time, let me just quickly jump into um, what we are doing in next stage after corrective rag, right? So this is, uh, if you, like I mentioned, the retrieval has to be really good, but you're not gonna get more than you know, two, two thirds of the time the right answer. So one of the things that we are looking at doing, and this is something that is kind of state of the art today, there's a lot of post training that's happening on these large language models to embed the knowledge into that. So we are, you know, this is what we are calling our automated perpetual expert. We are basically building a VMware model. Again, this is for our own use cases, but this is all being done on top of private AI, right? So if you have the GPUs, in order to actually do this kind of post training, fine tuning, instruction tuning, you can still use the GPUs that you have. Um, it takes, you know, for us, we, we trained on VMware documentation, which was about uh, 30 million tokens. It took us two and a half hours to train on, on like four GPUs. So this is within the grasp of all these organizations that want to build a better model for their own RAG applications. 